Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated podcast. I am your dungeon master, Anthony Reed. This is episode 151 and the first episode of the Fate of the Fae story arc. Obviously, there's some big stuff to get into, so we're going to get right to it here in just a minute. But I want to point out that in just a couple of days, Tuesday, February 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the internet, twitch.tv slash Adventure Incorporated, we are going to be doing our live tavern night. These are a ton of fun. We really, really love doing them. We love having you guys come out and join the chat. Everything is pseudo in canon. Some stuff happens that, uh, you know, it happens to the characters, but it's not like uh, super pressing irrelevant, but it's just so much fun. So come and join us for that. It's We, we want to see way more people in the chat. Every time we do them, we get more people, but we just want to see more and more of you guys uh, come and interact and have a good time. Also, on Tuesday... Uh, during the live stream, we will be unveiling a bunch of information about Adventure March. So come and check that out. Of course, the next day, Wednesday, it will be up on our social media, so you can check that on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, and there'll be an announcement on our website as well, adventuringpod.com. But we want to make sure that the people who are in the chat get a chance to see it first. So come check it out then. And of course, our Tavern Nights would not be happening without support from the patrons who have made them happen. They've reached our threshold to allow us to do those Tavern Nights. Patrons like Michael. So if you want to be a patron like Michael, head over to patreon.com slash adventureinc. Become a patron today. Uh, there's a ton of cool stuff going on there. Uh, a whole year's worth of backlog almost of uh, episodes, short stories, game material, um, just all kinds of fun stuff. We're still doing another Ancient Dragon run this uh, month where we have more players playing in a special game that's set aside just for them where I DM. Uh, th there's all kinds of cool rewards up there. Go and check them out and see what's right for you. All right, we got a lot to get to this episode, so let's get started. Nobles and farmers, knights and wenches, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Keth, the fighter monk. Guys, there's there there's a lot of there's a lot of puppy in this cloak. I'm, I I just I need, needed to say. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Genevera, the sorcerer. Genevera, you're sitting there next to Clyde, who just goes. What the fuck? I like <laughs> hold up my hand for a high five. <laughs> Gibetto, the rogue. As soon as they see the five of you, their expression hardens. Uh, well, we'll see you later. And Gibetto just turns. <laughs> <to later. laughs> Gillick, the paladin warlock. But, but you're dying again, right? Like you die, then you get a spirit. And then you're nothing. And then you become nothing. And then you're nothing. That sounds like bullshit. Let's go kill the Death Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and Asher, the Druid Barbarian. Yeah, but I'm asking specifically who, why Jeff is important to Asher. He just, he's just the first name. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to justify this. <laughs> Let us recall what happened when we last left our heroes. Ultimately, I think you were right. He slowly turns around. He says, It's time to call the Fae. He cats just like roars out in anger and just says, Genevieve, you will be the death of us all. His black onyx crown on his head. He says, We're home. Prepare yourselves, for this is the tale of Adventure Incorporated. Behind the, uh, the Fae Lord, that stands in front of you. Uh, several more people step through the portal. Uh, all of them similar uh, in their stature. They are all these Feylord uh, creatures. All of them have this mottled skin that marbles between gray and, and something more uh, akin to what you're used to um, in into like a fleshy tone. Uh, they all wear... Um, fine robes but they uh, have these ornamentations of the same black uh obsidian like substance that the the crown is made out of um 
and he's uh, turn the the central one um, turns to look at all of you, and he says, "You have summoned us." Holy um, shit! Hi. Yes. Um. We, yes. Uh. We did. Um. And uh, we are uh, we are the many pennies. And Genevieve kind of like wide eyed looks around at everyone else. Um, yep, we're and- the many pennies. Yeah, go on, keep talking. It has returned then. Y- yes. Yes. It has. He turns to Elatrix, who is just like stunned, um, staring at him, um, and he says. You have done well, my son. And Elatrix goes, Father? And he says, Yes, I have returned. I am the Oberal. Lanyer. King of the Seelie Court. These members of my court They are who are left, left of those who have not been, well, turned. My son, my child, I would speak with you. There is much for us to catch up on. And as for the rest of you, I'm sure you have many questions, and so I would leave you with my puck. Uh, seal. And you see sort of a um, <clears throat> a smaller looking uh, uh, creature step forward. He is a... Uh, the word is escaping my brain. Handsome. He is a handsome. He is a He's handsome. A handsome. Handsome elemental. He's a handsome seal named Puck. Uh, our other way around. Handsome puck named Seal. That's what it is. <laughs> He's a handsome nope. puck named Seal. He's a seal <laughs> named that's Puck. That's what he said. Kiss from yeah. a rose on a grave. It's funny. This is the second time that song has come up this weekend for me. Really? If uh, that's any indication of my weekend, that's how y'all know it was dope. Oh, it's Seder. That's the word I was looking for. Seder. Why was that so hard for me oh, to draw up in my brain? Oh, that's totally different. Not I've already seal. drawn a seal. Yeah. Seal. In our his, name is, his name is Seal. S-E-O-L. Name. His name is Puck. Seder. His name is Puck. His the title <laughs> His title is Puck. His name is Seal, and he is a Seder. Um, seal the Seder the Puck. Me. Jesus, Seder. I feel like we know more about him than 99% of the NPCs that we've ever met. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I 100% agree. Yeah. So we uh, know the, his name, his title, and what he is before he's spoken a word. <laughs> Put it in the wiki. Put it in the wiki. That's literally all the information on almost everyone else. We've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Lock oh, him I think up. We're, he's done. We're done with this one. Can you send another one? <laughs> Next. Next. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, so Lanyer, the, the puck. La- Lanier no, no. and uh, Elatrix sort of uh, Elatrix stands up and and steps aside with his father uh, as the satyr steps forward to speak with you. Um, he pulls like a, a long like flute, <clears throat> like uh, it's actually more like a pipe uh, mm. out of his uh, sort of the satchel at his side, and he like blows it once. He's like, <laughs> Josh, that was amazing. Will you do that one more time? Wow. Yeah. <gasps> oh Josh! Wow, <laughs> dope. Oh yeah, goodness. that's impressive. I was gonna yeah. get a sound effect to put in there, but now I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, hit me with the pipe noise, <laughs> quick. <laughs> um, he sort of he he puts the pipe back away, and he says, "Ah, welcome to your home. I suppose not ours, but what was once our home." These were our ancestral lands. In a time before, I am the puck of the court, the storyteller, the lore keeper. 
If there are things you would know about my people, about our place in this world, it would be my pleasure to share that information with all of you. Oh, that's so great to hear. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Gebetto Funk and One Two Stumble Knackle Timber Shivers at your service. And he does this big flourishy bow, takes off the Horton's hat, waves it around the whole nine. Um, you know, we were really nervous because the first Angelus Alias over here was saying that this was going to be a really bad thing for y'all to come. Uh, but it seems like maybe things are going to work out. <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> I would be happy to share with you all of the things that have happened to us in the time since we have left your land. Hold on, that doesn't sound like <clears throat> you're saying, no, we're good. No, it does not. Uh, and indeed, things are dire everywhere, and not just well, uh... here, but in the lands beyond where we come from. In a way, we are refugees to these lands. <clears throat> hey, I have a question. Wait a minute. Are you, um, are you, like, are all of the Fae not allowed to lie? Ooh. No, all, not all of the Fae are bound by such a restriction. Okay, are you? I'm, no, well, I'm not bound by that, that either. Works. I can lie if I so choose, but... So you can be lying right now. I certainly could be, but so far I haven't said anything that would uh, lead you to believe right. that, considering no, no. I've told you nothing but bad news. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just yeah. thought that maybe that's why you were dancing around the question. Yeah. Um, so, it is certainly an indelicate question for me to try and answer, one that will not... Uh, uh, that, well, <clears throat> let me try and frame this uh, in the way that will make the most sense, as there is much history to cover. Hold on. Did you say you're refugees? He draws a loot from his bag. Uh, and he sort of like strums the lute uh, and sort of like this uh, melody sort of fills the air as he strums Josh, it. Josh, can you give us that sound effect? Yeah, can you give us a lute sound with your mouth? No. <laughs> 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 okay, well, it's, a, it's a stringed instrument, correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strum. <laughs> <laughs> There was an amazing oh, moment uh, that <laughs> no one will Not ever get to it. see because it was in his face where he's like, fuck, no, I can't. <laughs> it it like almost this. looked like he was going to try. and then <laughs> I got nothing. I can't do it. Yeah, like, I don't have a loot. And I, can't I wouldn't even that. have been surprised <laughs> like, <laughs> if I had one. No, I, if you were able to do that with your mouth. Like, oh. like just, just like, well, bleh, 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 bleh. thank you. <laughs> right. so that was, that was better than what I could do. <laughs> was it? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he says, uh, a long time ago. At least I presume a long time ago in these lands, as it seems much has changed, although time between the plains is not always directly related. But a long time ago, when these lands were ravaged by shadow, we fought a great war against them. We had devised a plan, a way <clears throat> to seal them away once and for all. Our great king, Lanyer, showed us the path to battle them back and close the gates behind them. However, we knew that there would be a problem if we were to stay. You see, the outer plains, they are closely connected. It is a great amount of difficulty to travel from one of the outer plains to here uh, without a direct connection like the one we have forged here. But... It is easier to travel from one of the Outer Plains to one of the Outer Plains. So we sealed off our own land as well, to act as sentinels, as guardians, to try and keep the shadow at bay. Whether it was a hundred years or a thousand years, I'm not sure, but it did not take enough time before the shadow found their way to our realm. They had broken through. They had created their own gateway. 
a new war raged in our lands. We shut their gate, and we sealed off their their incursion, but it, they had already come, and they are an infestation. Slowly but surely, they turned our people. They infected our land, and what was once the shining cities and glowing lakes and forests are now less. In truth, I think all of us have been affected. All of us have been touched by it, but not all of us have fallen, and those who still cling to light, we have tried to evade, tried to destroy what shadow we could, rout it out. But the deep magic, the way that it functions, is so different than the way that our deep magic functions that it has been difficult as it has taken over. But if we are here, if this gate has been opened by the son of the Oberal, then there is a bigger problem at play, for the gates of shadow have been reopened here. That is the only way that this could have occurred. And if the gates of shadow are open here, then it is time once again for us to bring our fey magic to the world in hopes that we might abate the shadow. Yes. Ah. Is there any chance that those that came through can be manipulated by the shadow, like a secret ag agent of sorts? One of us? One of the Fey Lords? Yeah, that, that came through with you. As, as assuredly as any who have been steeped in shadow could be turned. That's scary. <laughs> so... That is scary. Do you... Um, you said they created their own gateway. Um, do you know how? Do you know, like... Is that how we could be getting so much shadow here right now? They made their own gateway here, and that's why we're... A gateway is the wrong term. Uh, it is more of a rend. They tore their way out of their shadow realm. They passed through the astral plane, and they tore their way into the fey realm. We cut off the rend. We closed their rupture, but... <clears throat> and I I believe that we contained most of it, but it is possible that some fell through the spaces between things. Okay, because the Fey Realm and the Shadow Realm sit in a different plane than our... Each plane well, sits within the astral plane. Each plane exists as its own sphere within those places. And if for them to travel from their realm to ours, they had to pass through that space of purple and blue and black. And, and they could have fallen, some pieces could have fallen into our world. Or could During still be in that place between. Um, ah. If the... And I don't know if you know the answer to this question. It, it seems like there's the Shadow, the Fae, and the Celestials. And the Celestials also exist on the outer plane? Yes, the Celestials but, also have an outer... Uh, their outer plane exists as well, yes. But then they have a gateway from their outer plane to here. So they were the... I, uh, their gateway was closed as well. Oh. Then how are they like angels and stuff? They have discovered ways to travel between planes without the ley lines. Well, looks like they're not alone in that now. <clears throat> I believe it has to do with the way that their form of the magics work. 
Gillick. Yes, um, Jamiro. When you've interacted with the Shadow Lord, has it always been on that same, uh, in the astral plane, the way that uh, it was the one time that I did? The the Shadow Lord. Yeah. You have you have interacted with one of the Shadow Lords directly. Oh, one there's of? more. Of. Oh no. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Suddenly, I'm feeling the existential crisis crawl back in. <laughs> oh, buddy. Follow the light, Gillick. You can do it. Okay. Um, Gillick, I think this might be a good time to tell him about it. Y- yeah. <clears throat> um, Gillick puts uh, shows the the back of his his gauntlet shows the Shadow Lord symbol. It says, "Yeah, so I'm I'm a paladin warlock." thing. I don't know. I don't really know what I am anymore, I guess. I... But... Oh, sorry, good. He, like, strums on the the lute for a moment, just sort of, like, absentmindedly, and he says, I think that there is something... Would you permit me to peer into your mind? Uh, no, yeah, go for it. You are one who are who is bound to the Celestial and bound to the Shadow, in a way. Yep, that's me. I wish to better understand this so that I might provide insight. Okay, so you're gonna, like, <clears throat> get inside my head? Do not resist, or it will hurt. Uh, okay. He closes his eyes. Oh you see sort of like flashes of like pain and fear on his face for a moment. Uh, uh, and he opens his eyes. He says, Oh, you, you have dealt with things you have not fully understood. Yeah. You are very lucky to be here. I hope you realize. No, I... Yeah, I realize I'm I'm a fortunate being. The nature... The nature of the outer planes is very similar to the nature of the other planes. The, the inner planes, the planes of the elements, fire, water, earth, and air, they are the closest to the material plane. It is why their presence is felt so directly here. It is why even you do not have to cast magic to make fire appear. You can see earth and wind around us everywhere. These things exist in this world because of their connection to the material plane. The planes of magic beyond the middle planes. Those can be summoned and called their magic drawn forth by mortals like yourselves. Those Hmm. planes are... Uh, a resource they their magic is uh something that can be used and wielded if our material plane were closer to those middle planes then perhaps you might find abjuration here as plentiful as you might find stone now it is just oh interesting yeah i follow you the outer planes are similar in that each of them is their own kind of magic as well. The magic of the Celestials, the magic of the Fae, and the magic of the Shadow all do similar things in a different way. The magic of the Celestials enhances something, something inherent about whatever it is that it is being cast upon. In ways, this can seem like an o- only a positive, although I suspect you've probably met people with less than savory traits you would not like to see enhanced in them. You have seen things that are dangerous or evil. Those can also be enhanced with celestial magic. It takes something that is already there, and it expands it. It makes it bigger, for good or for ill. 
fey magic is transformative. It takes something that is there and morphs it, twists it into something new. It is why the Oberl was able to take the races here and make them something greater. Give them a spark. Twist them. It is why he was able to take pieces from each of the races and transform them into the failings. Fey magic fundamentally must take something that is there and transform it into something new. Shadow magic overwrites. It corrupts. It replaces. It takes something that is there and it fills it with shadow and makes it into... makes it shadow at its core. In... That is why when, when I say that we have been steeped in shadow, we, that process has started, but it has not finished. In truth, I think Elatrix may be the last untouched fae in existence. Will Elatrix be diminished now that his his purpose is fulfilled? I don't know the answer to that. That is something between he and Lanyer. His purpose has been fulfilled, and you are right to recognize that. What that means for him, it will depend on whether he is capable of accepting a new purpose, or if he accepts that he has finished. I don't think this was Lanyer's plan. I don't think he expected us to be fleeing our home. I think he expected us to hold the line, and when things got dire here, to come and help. But, but that didn't go as we had planned. Hey, um, I'm sorry, I just... I'm so happy to have somebody around that knows more than we do about stuff. Um, <laughs> like, we don't know shit about shit, and uh, somehow we know the most out of anybody around. Um, if fey magic is transformative, and shadow magic uh, replaces stuff, how does celestial magic work? It has to have, it takes things that are already present in a thing and enhances it. So like Fey, or? Fey changes it. Uh, okay. Let us say, let us say that you are a strong, brave person. Yeah, let us say. <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's assume. If, <clears throat> if you were touched by celestial magic. <clears throat> you would become the most brave person. If you were touched by fey magic, you might, uh, it might change you to no longer be brave, but instead to be clever. If you were touched by shadow magic, it would make you no longer brave, but shadow. I guess I don't understand then... Um, that is a simplification, a gross simplification. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're changing someone, you're, aren't you doing the same thing as Shadow? Yeah, that Isn't, was going to be my point, too. It just seems like they're both transformative. All of these magics are transformative. Taking something that is a small piece of someone and making it bigger is the same thing. All three of these magics work very similarly, but they are on... But they're... they're Intent is different. Their purpose is different. But yes, they are not... The fundamental difference between them is sort of how they are used. Shadow so, is corruptive. 
Shadow changes it always into shadow. Whereas Faye would change it into something different, but not dark. Well, I... It's open to interpretation, maybe. Maybe or maybe not. <laughs> there are certainly Faye now that would use the magic to twist things in a way that you might consider dark. Those who are, have become our... Who were once our brothers and are now our enemies. Those of the unseely court. <clears throat> So, how do we fight the shadow? Oh, like, how do you get rid of it? Because that really, like, when we're boiling things down, that's what we need to do right now. Yeah. The reason we brought, we opened this, the reason this was opened, is because we keep finding the shadow in places that it's not supposed to be. Which is here, I guess. <laughs> right. If it's like, if it's like a disease... How do we help the plane we're on fight that off? Lanyer and Elatrix are walking back when Lanyer uh, sort of chimes into the conversation here. He says, <clears throat> You cannot fight the Shadow. Not directly. You... We tried. We tried and we failed. And I don't think that the races of the mortal world can handle this onslaught. Even, and he turns to the angel, who is still just sort of hovering and listening. Uh, even the Celestials, I think, would have a hard time standing against this. And Teladoc says, You tried this on your own. You tried alone. We fought the shadow together, and we were winning. And Lanier says, It infected one of your gods. The shadow... I don't know if it can be defeated. But I believe that it can be subdued, trapped in a way. Something I have been thinking about, but I, I have not had the ability to make that happen. As I, it is not within my ability, my nature to do so. I am an agent of freedom, not of captivity. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. We like freedom. <laughs> yeah, but we also like the shadow not uh, infecting everyone on every plane. So That's also a good point. But like you said, you can't you can't get rid of the shadow. It's part of the fabric of the universe if I'm understanding you correctly. It is certainly in a way it is part of the fabric of the universe, but there are certainly if it had been my preference, we would have sealed the shadow into their own realm and they never would have escaped. They never would have left. They could have continued to be a part of the universe without reaching out beyond. That... That did not happen. Now I... I can... sense it. All around us here. It has reached to this place. Even beyond the... the gate opening, which must have been recent. But no, something, it has been leaking here for far longer. That's what we've been trying to say. Yeah. It is not as heavy here as it was in our 
realm. But it is here. <sighs> the unseely court will be pleased that they have driven us away for a time. Eventually, they will come to try and claim this place as well. They will not be satisfied, I suspect. The Unseelie is just a a type of fae that isn't like ju- the, the fae that was corrupted by Shadow. They are the ones that have been fully corrupted. They are, okay. <clears throat> I, I guess I have a personal question. Uh, so celestial magic enhances, shadow magic infects, and fey magic transforms. I, is that, is that what happened to me? Am I a different thing because I am of fey magic, or I am made, or... (sighs) Yes. Uh, you was, are... There's a multiple choice question. Well, I was going to answer it. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> the Sylvan are of the Fae in that we took the races of the world and transformed them to the Sylvan. There were No one was born Sylvan. Right. And no one... No, no Sylv- Sylvan was not the default for anyone. It was a choice that was made. You may not recall this, but you answered the call. Yeah. And when you did, you were transformed. You were changed by the magic of the Fae to take the form you have now. So, are there uh, any left, or am I the only I don't know I'm frankly shocked to see one here at all I get that a lot Uh, I would have expected that all of you would have passed on but (laughs) Elatrix says um, the Tezcat Lapoca it protected them and um Lanyar nods and he says, then if there, I do not know what the Tezcat Lapoca have done. I do not know if there are others that they are still protecting or, uh, so it's not okay. This whole time I was under the impression this was like, I was part of some grand plan you guys had. And now it just seems like I'm once again, just a thing that exists. For some reason. I mean, your purpose was to help us in the Shadow War, to close the ley lines to uh, f- to the realm of shadow, to close the ley line to the realm of uh, to, to the realm of the Fey, and to close the ley line to the realm of Celestial, to close the outer planes off from this world so that it would have a chance to grow and hopefully find an answer to these things in the intervening time. And I have only been here a few minutes. I I am still hopeful that that is the case. That through your ingenuity, through the gift that you have been given, that we can find a way to push back this corruption to contain it. <clears throat> sure. But... I- your purpose as a Sylvan now, it seems from the small bit I spoke with Elatrix is that you have found a reason to be and a purpose to your abilities. You have found, you have found a reason to be Sylvan. Asher just kind of like is quiet because he's and just thinks i guess um 
I all I want to do is saying, "Show me a reason for、I'm、being Sylvan." <laughs> But I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with that, so you're welcome. You can honestly strong bit. I wish you had. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. <laughs> It's a good good theoretical bit.、Uh, yeah, <laughs> would have high fived you had、It's、you a- done it. It's a concept bit. Concept.、Um, <laughs> I've got a. I've got the idea for a bit that I'd like to、uh, have happen.、Uh, right. I just right. didn't want to interrupt. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I feel like you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, in she, a way that、didn't... wasn't easily editable out. Edit、uh, out. I'm out, not going edit to. Edit outable. She, she didn't edit. <laughs> she just did it after the fact and then derailed. That's、right. more. Which、huh. is honestly <laughs> way more supportive. But also, it would have been fine. I would have been fine with it.、Um, so th- there are so there's so many less of you now, and the world that you sealed yourselves off to is seems like much、uh, less safe for for you as well as it just seems like it kind of sucks now.、Uh, did you have another way to fight the?、Uh, <laughs> The shadow that you didn't try. Like, do you guys have any ideas that you're gonna bring to the table? Um, I'm trying to decide if it's worth it to deal with these people. <laughs> Or interviewing them for like, what、I'm, are you bringing to the table? Like,、uh, so Kat's.、Uh, he's not saying this out loud, but he's just like, this is it. Like, I thought. <laughs> yeah. I thought this would be the magic. Same,、Missile. yeah. Wicked same. Same.、Uh, I was like, oh, they're either going to be corruptive or like save the day, and they're just kind of like, oh, hello. I, I was like, this could be the last episode. You know what? Just like literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.、Uh, that's why Jibeto's Jibeto's question of wait, you're refugees? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like,、uh, okay, so this is going to warm up into the like, but we have,、uh, you know, this MacGuffin. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. We're like, refugees, but we also have this cannon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, like that kills like, shadow. You、yeah. know, a flashlight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And、uh, but like Asher's so underwhelmed. He's just like, are they called like sealy because they were like they wanted to seal it off, and like the unsealy <laughs> don't want it sealed off. S E L E. No, I, I. Rob the player knows, the, like gets it. Well, I sure did. I've spelled、not. it three different ways. <laughs> you did. They were all great. Cat's <laughs>、um, like, Cat's worried that the only thing he's gonna get out of this is like some fashion tips, you know. <laughs>、uh, Lanier sort of、uh, takes a beat, and he says, "The plan that I have." I set into motion a long time ago. You, the greater races, are the strongest weapon we have against the shadow. Tell us more. <laughs> yeah, go on. Really. <laughs> <laughs> The power is with has been within you the whole time. Yeah, you, lost the power. The secret was friendship all along. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's like the the quest givers like version of being Socratic. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck, the fuck answer is inside of you.、Uh, you have been instilled <laughs> with free will. You have been instilled with free will. Something. That the shadow does not understand something that truly my people do not understand, and something that he nods again to the angel that they do not understand. We are creatures of the outer planes, creatures of magics, bound by our purpose, and while they are not all the same purpose, we are bound by them nonetheless. You are creatures of free will. You decide what binds you. You decide when you do a thing or why you do a thing. I know the gates of shadow have opened here because otherwise Elytrix would not have decided to open this gate. That 
was his purpose. That is what he was bound to. And if you tried to get him to do it before, it would not have worked until that gate was open. But... But he said he wouldn't open it if it wasn't the right time before we told him to open it. Then the gate had not opened yet. The gate to Shadow had not opened. What? No, like just before... Just before we opened the gate, he said, I won't open this if you don't think it's the right time. He turns to Elatrix. He says, this is true. And Elatrix nods. Lanyer sort of, a smile sort of pulls up a little bit. He says, truly, you, you are fascinating creatures. That he would put his trust in you to that degree. So much so that it could bend his purpose. That is... I suppose the fact that you knew what he was should have led me to that purpose anyway. When I created Elatrix, it was... This purpose was the primary reason, but I instilled in him protections. Protections from magic, protections from detection, and protections from being discovered. It cost us a lot. Well... I wish that it could have been... I wish that I had more to offer you than what I do. But I am not without services to offer. I hope so. Yeah, so now what, I guess? (laughs) We opened the door, and we found the thing, and I'm just like, okay, door's open. Twiddling thumbs. My my uh, recommendation is simple. We have come through this gate. The 15 of us that are here are all that you would ever want to pass through this gate at this point. My recommendation to you, Asher, is to step through, to close the gate, to return to your anchor. Okay. Seal it off. The gate to shadow is open, which means that we will still face danger. But the longer we can forestall the unsealy court from entering this realm, the better. Okay. Then... My court and I will find a place here, somewhere that we can protect, somewhere that we can make a home for the Fae once again. And we will help you in whatever way we can to fight against the Shadow. Um, Jibeto's going to look at Teladoc and say, listen, I know it's not in your nature uh, to share the things that you know uh, because there's value in those things. But I think this needs to be shared with the rest of the divine court. I will carry their words to my mistress. She will decide. Um. Gillick, I. How are you feeling? (laughs) 
hungry. <laughs> no. Um. No. Um. I saw what happened out on the field. I, yeah, we haven't really had a chance to oh, uh, decompress yeah. all that, and she kind of looks at Keth. Keth does not look at Genevera. I saw you attack one of our one of our friends. It uh, but it wasn't it wasn't me. I got, I guess, possessed. Electric sort of side eyes you a little bit. Sorry. He steps forward to you. And he says, Oh boy. Gillick, I think we should have a talk. Uh, okay. If the rest of you will excuse us. Um, sure. And Asher kind of like shuffles through his bag for where uh, that seed of changes. And he's just like, just kind of making sure he still has it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he sort of like pulls you aside, uh, Gillick. Okay. Um, and he says, "What? What's happened, Gillick? I something has changed in you. It's, uh, I guess, the Shadow Lord, um, the." I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just, I like being a warlock, I guess. And it's kind of like trying to balance the light and the shadow. And I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you mean by change? How do you, how how does it seem like I've changed? I spent a fair amount of time with Viltroth over the last two years give or take although most recently not not as much but one of the things that I always spoke to him about was how he was able to do what he does how he was able to draw on energy of the shadow lord without yeah. succumbing to the pull oh, boy that's the question Gilk takes a sip from his flask he said that he was able to draw on the shadow in spite of the Shadow Lord, not basically because of his pure hatred for the creature. He was able to pull himself away from its power so far that he drew some of it with him. Oh, is that what he did? Okay. I am afraid that in a way you have leaned too far into his power. It is seductive. It is dangerous. Yeah. So, what do you think I should do? You must follow your own path, but I think that if you continue to lean into this shadow, lean into its... As I said, it is corruptive. If you lean into it, you will lose yourself, Gillick. I think there is something I can do for you in the short term. Something to... You are of your own mind now, protected by the Celestials, and I can try and weave a barrier to keep them at bay for a time, using similar That's techniques good. that Viltroth used. Excellent. But if you lean into it, those protections will fail. Ah... Uh. You can still draw on the power, but you must draw on it. Uh, you must steal it, not accept it. Oh, steal it, not accept it, huh? Um, how, all right, how do I do that? It is a matter of intention. Okay. It is, it is how you draw upon the power. I can't tell you how to do that any more than I can tell you how to worship the gods. I can't mm. tell you how to br how to gather strength from them. It is something you must understand within yourself, and if you can't do it, then 
then you run a dangerous gambit. I know. I just, I guess I don't know how to draw power from a god other than worship. But it sounds like you're saying I shouldn't worship the Shadow Lord. If you worship the Shadow Lord, you will fall. Okay, so I'm going to figure out how to take power from the Shadow Lord. Yes. That's tricky. He sort of, uh, figure it out. he puts out his hand and he says, may I, may I borrow some strength from your shield? Uh, of course, of course. Uh, Gillick extends his shield out. He places a hand on it and he closes his eyes and he sort of like breathes it in a little bit. And you feel sort of this warmth wash over you. Well, that's pleasant. Like I said, that will protect you for a time. It is not a permanent solution. You are still bound to the Shadow Lord. You have gone too close to him for me to ever really fully remove that. Yeah, that makes sense. Even if you abandoned your path as a warlock, you would still be bound to the Shadow Lord. Ah, okay. But, you may... You are now protected, at least in some capacity. And if you continue on a path of rejecting the Shadow Lord, you can still take from him. But if you turn to him, he will find you. Okay. Okay. This will be a struggle, Gillick. You will fight this, as Viltroth did every single day. Gillick takes another sip from his flask. I am sorry, for what it is worth, that you have found yourself in this situation. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of my own fault. Uh, I went, I went looking for trouble. I guess I don't know. I studied too much of the warlock stuff. Well, it'll be okay. Uh. I'll figure it out. Okay. Actually, I have an idea. I think Asher might have something that I could use to at least keep keep the Shadow Lord maybe a little bit at bay. I think. I know that information, correct? Yeah, yeah you know so, he has it. Yeah. I, so told, my, I showed you it. <clears throat> yeah. Out of game, it sounds like... Elatrix is basically saying you can stay a warlock... And you can stay a paladin, and you can use your warlock powers. You just have to not, character-wise, worship the Shadow Lord the way that you have been. Yeah, that's what I got as well. So I I agree with you. I, I agree with you 100%. It's just, in my mind... Gilk can't do that. <laughs> Gil can't do that exactly. Okay. It's like I'm either going full paladin or full full shadow lord warlock. <laughs> sure. All right. So uh, Elatrix sort of uh, nods to you, Gillick, and uh, moves back toward the rest of the group. Um, <clears throat> Lanyer says. Do you know of a place that we should go? There's a there's a forest that has been sealed off with shadow. You could like remove oh, yeah. it yeah, and you then live there. Start yeah. your start your campaign around that area. I mean, we we could help. We can take a look. If there is anything we can do to help that forest, then <coughs> perhaps that would be our first step. And then we can use that as our place to, to stay, to be. Hey, Elatrix. Yes? What if you... I don't know. What if you came back from the dead and took back the kingdom from Clyde. I mean, or like just in general, um, 
like it doesn't necessarily have to be Carapath that you take back, but like I know for a fact that the, some of the kings, uh, four of the kings specifically, are working together or like are willing to work together. And there's been some talk about having like a like a high king, and then that might help some of the. So just you know, spitballing there. Double king. <laughs> Triple king. <laughs> Monster king. <laughs> Would you say you were a spitball king there? <laughs> no, it's just I was just, you know, uh getting some idea you know. Oh sorry, that was that was a pun. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah, I was just Yeah, just, it was a bad one, but it's still a pun. Uh, balking is no, it was fine. I liked it. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Listen, they don't have to be good. They just have to be puns, okay? Jesus, Asher. <laughs> Sorry. Forgot this was in character. I... <laughs> what do you mean, character? What? <laughs> <laughs> Asher passes out. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm just... I do Reality agree, tricks. though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do agree, though, that... Um... It might be a good idea for you to, like, be not dead. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't know where my place is anymore. Here. I, uh, you're having an existential crisis because you did your job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, it sounded like an... A slight? I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> oh, tell. Oh, because you finally did your job around here. <laughs> you know? Hey, man. It was like <laughs> supportive and kind of a... Yeah, it was a little, <laughs> it was a little dick-ish. Yeah, you can tell I'm a middle manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said little dick-ish. Anthony laughs because he knows it's true. <laughs> he um, is a middle manager. It is true. <laughs> I I do not think I can simply pick up where I left off. I do not think I can, as you say, come back from the dead and lead the kingdom. But... Why not? What I did for years I did to preserve this. It was a guise. It was as close as I could come to a lie. It was not a lie. I care very deeply for this kingdom. It troubles me to see it in the state that it is in. But I am not that anymore. I have moved to... I, I am beyond that, guys. I am beyond that person. I am something else, and I don't know what that is, but I don't... I know what it's not. Um... Can we at least, like, get a little diplomacy help in that case? Because, like, we're taking on a lot of jobs that we, ha like... I, we're not good at. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. I didn't want to say that directly, but, like, that that we don't know anything about, really. Um, yeah, and Some of us are really bad at it. We need to... <laughs> uh, Je uh, Jennifer sweats a little because Kat's making her sad and nervous. Um, oh. No, so, so like... Uh, it would be really helpful if we could continue with what we're doing to try and stop Gorm, because that's really important and also was mentioned to me that maybe that needs to be the thing that we do right now. But also there's so much else that needs to be done, like we need to take care of the fact that the whole kingdom is falling apart. So, like, if you're not going to come back from the dead, like, just a little guidance there might be, um, you know, uh, helpful. I will return with you to Maghamara. I will speak with the others who are in charge 
and we will I will help in any way that I can. It is it is clear to me that whatever my purpose is now in many ways it lies with the five of you in supporting you in whatever way that I can do that but still be true to what I am. Maybe what I am Maybe there will be a time where I can help in the way that you want me to help again. But for now, an advice is something I might be able to do. Great. So, step one, we go through this portal and close it. Mm -hmm. where we will be entering into the outer planes closer than we've ever been to the plane of shadow. Yes. Step two, we meet you back at Mughamara and get advice? We make a plan. We decide what comes next. Teladoc? Is that... Do you think... uh, Do you think that... I don't know... um, Meets the criteria for letting these people at it? This? Any gestures to, like, the dome? Teladoc sort of just hangs in the air for a moment. He says... This interaction has been recorded. I will carry it for quality assurance purposes. To my <laughs> for quality training and quality assurance yeah. purposes, right? Uh, for Teladoc. I will carry it to the mistress. If if this group is finding a home. In the forest that you mentioned, I will free them from this place if this portal closes behind them. I fear that we have already gone too far, that it is only a matter of time before the Shadow War begins again. I fear the actions we took today have pushed that forward, not halted it. I would love to be proven wrong. Good luck, many pennies. There's another crack. And the the barrier drops and he disappears. Goodbye. Hey adventurers, DM Anthony here again. I just want to remind you that there are lots of ways to support the show. Head on over to patreon.com slash adventure inc. Tell your friends about the show. Rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Links and more can be found at adventureinc.podbean.com. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. I haven't cut my hair in a year. Hey, we haven't cut Kennedy's hair in over a year either. In fact, we've never cut her hair. Okay. Yeah, weird brag. We're not going to either. Well, that's not true, because I'm sure at some point she'll have dead bits on the end of her hair. She already does. Yeah. That's Never rude. cut her hair. Because all of your hair is dead. You're right. Good point. Never cutting her hair. Yep. Done. No, you have to cut all of her hair, because her hair is all dead bits. <laughs> that's why I'm bald.
<laughs> I refuse to have any dead bits on the top of my head. None of them. Yeah, this beard dead completely bit. alive. That's why it's so short. <laughs> I, I'm a Medusa beard. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? I can now. Uh, a Mandusa with a with a snake beard. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. That's the weirdest boner like a I've ever gotten. Snake mustache that's just like two right. snakes that like curl in. <laughs> like snake back hair. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no, my yeah. sna- hairy snake chest. Uh, yeah, have you seen my my snake happy trail? <laughs> <laughs> it leads to the snake happy place. <laughs> well, wait, what does the snake happy trail lead to? Yeah. <laughs> More snakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More snakes, yeah. One specific snake in particular. Just like a, just like a normal dick. Like, <laughs> surrounded by snakes. <laughs> just like a regular pita. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fight a Mandusa in the game, Anthony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>